Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, we're gonna be going through all the puzzles I completed for the month of April. And it's a bit of a mix here. We've got some that were on my Instagram feed, some that were in videos, which of course I'll link in the cards above, and some that I just felt like doing. Um, there's also some here that I used as practice for a recent uh, state puzzle competition that I participated in. And yeah, so I'm gonna give you a sort of quick review and my thoughts on each puzzle. And then at the end, I'll also let you know which was my least favorite and which was my favorite. So the puzzles are not in any particular order, although I have grouped them according to puzzle brand and I'll be sure to have them in the description box below as well. So you can look them up if you're interested. Um, I'm actually going to be starting with uh, three puzzles that aren't here. So I've actually just lent them to a friend, but I'll be sure to you know, include an image of them so you know what they look like and what I'm talking about. So the first one is actually one I did a video on recently, which is the Art and Fable 1000 piece Mantis Mundi puzzle. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, it was my first time trying the brand and just fell in love and went out and got three more puzzles from the brand because I enjoyed the experience so much. Uh, yeah, beautiful uh, packaging and beautiful puzzle image. They do a lot of like sort of classic art style images. So a lot of painted work and things like that. Um, so it's a great brand if you love sort of classic art style and puzzles. Um, yeah, so the pieces fit so well together. Um, yeah, very few false fits. You can lift up sections and also they have what they call like the velvet touch surface, which is essentially like a very soft silicon feel, but yeah, it's very addictive. Um, yeah, so overall just a wonderful puzzling experience. Um, oh yeah, and this velvet touch, it's also completely matte, like no sheen at all. So fantastic, especially if you're doing very detailed puzzles, things like that. Um, yeah, so absolutely love the brand, totally recommend it. And I really am looking forward to doing more of them. And then the next puzzle that's not here is by the brand Water and Wines, who actually do like a lot of, like all their puzzles are sort of, well, most are, are wine themed. So they're all maps and each map puzzle is based on a area where there's wine or champagne, or in my case, uh, I had the Scottish whiskey puzzle, which is 1000 pieces and it was a map of Scotland. And yeah, it's just beautifully illustrated, has all these like, you know, fun little sort of, uh, images representing like the different places in Scotland that you know uh, like whiskey distilleries or origins of whiskey things like that like it's kind of a bit educational because the packaging also includes like tasting notes on whiskey and different types of whiskies and regions and yeah it's like quite informative um, but the really awesome thing about water and wines is they seem to have the same manufacturer as Art and Fable. So um, I think they're both actually made like in Poland, but yeah, they feel exactly the same. So they both have that soft touch surface, completely matte, same beautiful puzzle piece fit. Um, yeah, so both have beautiful quality. Um, yeah, so if you want a sort of fun puzzle to do and you're into like wines and things like that, it's yeah, a really fun and just a beautiful option. So. Yeah, I'm definitely keen to do them. I'm not actually a wine drinker. I, I do like whiskey from time to time, so that's why I chose that one. Um, but I'm still tempted to get some of the others just because they're just so fun and colorful and yeah, I just love the quality. And then the third puzzle that's not here is a wooden puzzle and it's the Wentworth um, Rabbit Heaven puzzle and it's 500 pieces. So I did that one for the Easter weekend because why not, it made sense. And yeah, it's just a really lovely image of these big uh, kind of plump rabbits looking like they're having a field day in this beautiful garden eating all these veggies. And yeah, it's just a really beautiful image. It was actually quite tricky. Um, I thought like, oh, it's gonna be a breeze. It's only 500 pieces, but because all the wooden pieces are made up of like cute little whimsy pieces and like irregular piece shapes, it's quite tricky. And there was like a lot of sky and greenery in it. So yeah, it actually took me a little while to put together a bit, quite a bit longer than a sort of standard 500 piece puzzle. Um, but yeah, I really loved, uh, yeah, just loved the artwork and you know, the beautiful sort of wood fire smell of it. And it was just a really, yeah, lovely experience comes in a drawstring bag and you know, it's their puzzles are very much sort of like keepsake puzzles or, you know, like family heirlooms or things that you can pass on 
through friends and family, that sort of thing. Like they're just really lovely. Um, and yeah, it's just so fun having the whimsy. So I've done one of their puzzles before, but it didn't actually have whimsy pieces. It had like, it was a sort of special challenge puzzle. Um, but this one, yeah, it had like cute little bunny rabbits and birds and flowers, like so many whimsies packed into it. I was really impressed. So yeah, I have a few more of their puzzles waiting for me. So I'm definitely looking forward to doing those soon as well. So now that we've gone through those three, let's go through the puzzles that we do actually have here. Um, so let's go through this big 2000 piece at Ravensburger one, which is called Cinderella. And the artworks by the artist Peter Church. So you might have seen like there's like a Romeo and Juliet one and I think the Merry Wives of Windsor, which are also out at the moment done by the same artist. Um, so it's a really beautiful, really detailed, intricate image. Um, so yeah, the artwork's lovely. Um, but and, and the quality is your classic Ravensburger quality, including puzzle dust, which I'm not a fan of. Like they do have so much puzzle dust in their puzzles. Um, but yeah, the pieces were lovely, but um, I was a bit unimpressed because it seems like when they, I guess, enlarged the image to fit the 2000 piece size, the image sort of became blurry or just wasn't clear re resolution. So yeah, the these beautiful like sharp details here just were kind of a bit fuzzy and blurry on the pieces. So yeah, it was a bit disappointing. And I've sort of discovered that I don't actually like big piece counts all that much uh, for a couple reasons. One, I actually have a round, teeny tiny, completely impractical table for puzzling. Um, so it's always a, you know, a bit of a bother getting out my big puzzle board and it takes up so much space. And so there's that. But um, also I sort of found myself getting a bit bored and distracted partway through this. Like I just, I think I'm so used to doing like 1000 piece counts, 500, where it's like, I can do it and it's done quickly, that I was just kind of feeling a bit impatient and just wanting to get this one done. And also because it was so, it was actually quite difficult. It took a fair amount of time. So I was sort of, yeah, getting a bit over it. So I think um, I'm either gonna have to do less 2000 piece puzzles, which is okay, because I don't have that many in my collection anyway, or, you know, kind of pace myself where maybe I break up the puzzling by, you know, taking a break, doing something else and coming back to it because I just don't seem to have the patience for something like this. Um, but yeah, so that was my experience with that one. Glad I did it, but yeah, still a little bit disappointing about the sort of image quality. So hopefully the other 1000 piece ones by the same artist don't have that problem because they're smaller, but I don't know. Um, so another Ravensburger one I did this month is, this is actually the one from the puzzling competition that I was in. Um, so they let us take home the puzzle that we worked on. You might notice that this one's actually still sealed and that's because I was the lucky person who got a puzzle that had a missing piece. So they actually were really kind and gave me a brand new puzzle to, puzzle to take home instead. So that's really nice. Um, I don't actually have a finished image of this puzzle because I was busy puzzling at the time and couldn't take a photo. But if I get a chance to do this one before I publish this video, then I'll pop it in up the top. Um, but yeah, it's just a, you know, normal Ravensburger quality, lovely pieces, puzzle dust. Um, the, these weren't large piece sizes. They were just normal, like the same as the 2000 piece. So it wasn't like the large pieces, but yeah, it's just a cute cat image and it's called Trendy, which is kind of weird. But yeah, kind of this stylized kitty cat. It says meow. Um, yeah, and it was actually deceptively tricky. Um, when I opened it up at the start of the competition, I was like, oh, that's easy, these big bold shapes. But actually it was an hour and a half later, I was still going on it. So <laughs> there you go. And I'm definitely not, for the record, I'm definitely not the flash. I am not a speed puzzler. Um, I still came in well under the time limit, which is three hours, so I came in under came in like just under two hours. So I'm happy with that. Um, maybe next time I can beat that, we'll see. Um, but it was an interesting experience, kind of stressful, but yeah, still glad I did it and glad I got to do a cute cat puzzle and take it home as well. So yeah, happy with that. And then what else? Let's um, go through some of these larger ones here. So I've got a couple of Magnolia puzzles here, which is a Turkish brand, and I just did them very recently. 
So this one was in my Instagram feed and it's 1000 pieces and it's called Audrey, so Audrey Hepburn. And yeah, I really, um, this is the first time doing Magnolia with these two and I really had a great time. Uh, they have really nice quality. Um, yeah, they sort of have a very smooth finish, not soft like the Art and Fable, but just smooth, like hard. Um, not too shiny though, like they're actually fairly matte. There's a tiny weeny bit of sheen sometimes, but for the most part, they're very matte, kind of like the same as the box actually, like the same sort of feel. Um, and yeah, this is, these two here were by the same artist. Um, a lot of their puzzles, they have a lot of puzzles by this artist who does like a lot of sort of female icons and uh, is very like, you know, known for the large eyes and the interesting features. So yeah, really beautiful artwork. Um, was, this one was actually quite tricky. Like Audrey herself was pretty easy to put together, but all this gray was like quite tricky. So it took me a while to finish the background. Um, but yeah, really impressed with this brand. They're quite uh, reasonably priced too. Um, so fairly affordable, I think. Um, and just, yeah, beautiful quality pieces fit together really nicely. There is puzzle dust, but it wasn't too much of an issue. You can definitely do a puzzle pickup. Um, yeah, not really any false fits. So yeah, very impressed. Definitely a new favorite brand for sure. And I have more of them now in my collection. So I'm looking forward to doing those too. And so just like that one, um, I also did the Queen's Gambit one by the same artist. And this is also 1000 pieces and I just did a video on this. So that will be linked up the top. And yeah, you would have seen in the video that I really enjoyed it. And now I want to watch the Queen's Gambit all over again. So I might have to binge watch that soon. Um, so yeah, definitely all the same pros that the Audrey one had. Like, yeah, beautiful, um, great quality. Yep, loved it. And then um, here's another one I did for Easter. This is a Cobble Hill 1000 piece one and it's just called Easter Eggs. And yeah, I've had this one in my collection for a little while, but I only just got around to doing it. Um, yeah, I really like Cobble Hill. Um, I've done, I've got quite a few and I've done a few before. And they're just sort of a, I think like the box. Yeah, they're just like cardboard backing. The pieces fit pretty snugly together. They're all like um, irregular shapes too. So that's kind of fun, a bit like Springbok. Um, and I just thought the images were really fun and colorful. It's all these sort of, I guess, cookies that are with different like icing decoration on and they're just really fun and cute for Easter. Um, yeah, with like Cobble Hill, um, there is a bit of puzzle dust. Yeah, the pieces stay together fairly well. Like, I don't know if you could do a puzzle pickup, but like they usually stay together well enough that you can sort of move some sections. Um, not as nice as the Magnolia. Um, and the surface is sort of like, I'm trying to remember because I've done so many puzzles that I'm like, what was this puzzle like? Um, yeah, just pretty, they're like, I guess, they're a good brand. I don't think they're like extraordinary, but I enjoy them. Um, and I think like the surface of the pieces is like, it's not too shiny, but it's not completely matte sort of, it's, it's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, definitely enjoyed this and probably do it again next Easter. I can, yeah, definitely see this one staying in my collection for a while and it's just, just a fun one to do. And then, oh, what do we do next? Um, maybe we'll do some of these ones over here. So we've got here this beautiful Gibson's one. Um, I actually did a video not that long ago on a Gibson's haul and sort of tried some out. So I'll link that as well. Um, this is the A World of Life puzzle, 1000 pieces. And it's essentially like this sort of uh, vintage style map with all this sort of collage -y, Victoriana kind of beautiful images of plants and flowers and animals and like hot air balloon train. Yeah, it's, it's really pretty. Um, it was a bit tricky doing like the map bit in the middle, but yeah, all the other, I had to sort of work my way outside in and yeah, all the plants and flowers and animals were pretty easy to put together and really fun. Um, yeah, I really like the Gibson's quality, beautiful thick pieces. They fit together nicely. You can pick up sections, not a little bit of sheen. I think there's puzzle dust as well. I'm like trying to remember because I did this one a little while ago. Um, but yeah, just, yeah, beautiful puzzles, nice quality. Um, and I've got a fair few other ones in my collection, which I am, you know, eager to do as well. So yeah, definitely recommend this one if you love sort of maps and especially vintage maps. So yeah, really nice. And then this one here is a round puzzle and it's the 1000 piece um, 
Doug Atkin, who's an American, like, I guess, artist, but photographer. Um, and this is actually in collaboration with the MCA Australia, which is the Museum of Contemporary Art Australia, uh, which is based here in Sydney. And yeah, they just made this puzzle with him and they offered to send it to me to try out. So yeah, very uh, pleased that, you know, it was really generous of them to gift it to me. Um, so yeah, it's not normally the sort of thing I would pick because it's like photography and it's not like bright hot pink and rainbow, but I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I just, it turned out to be quite a stunning image, especially like when it's like all laid out on the table in front of you, it just looked really spectacular. Um, so yeah, as for like quality, um, the pieces were nice and thick. They definitely did have puzzle dust. And I think, yeah, the backing is like white paper. Um, and it came in a resealable like Ziploc bag. So that was good and had a giant poster in there too. So fantastic. Um, but yeah, the pieces were fairly glossy um, and they sometimes stayed together and then sometimes didn't. So it's a bit of a 50-50. So the quality was like, okay. It wasn't like the greatest ever. Um, but I wasn't necessarily expecting the greatest ever because it is like, they're not a puzzle company. They probably worked with a manufacturer to just have these made. But you know, I would definitely still try more of their artist collaboration puzzles out in the future because, you know, I think it looked, this is just a really cool idea to turn one of his photos into like this really big round puzzle. It just looked really cool. So yeah, I'm really glad that I was able to try this one. And I guess if you into Doug Atkin, definitely recommend this one. And then let's do these ones. So I did a couple of cloudberries. I did botany, um, you know, uh, enjoyed it. You know, very colorful, dreamy, beautiful, detailed image. Um, this sort of great, lovely cloudberries quality where uh, pieces fit nicely together. You can like move sections around. There's a bit of puzzle dust. They have that sort of, if you've done them before, they have, you know what I mean by they sort of have this waxy surface, like, yeah, I guess it just feels waxy. It's sort of the best way to describe it. Um, and the only sort of issue I have is I do still find, even though there's like a variety of piece shapes, they do seem to still have a lot of like false fits, which is like quite weird to me. I'm like, but how they have like, like lots of different piece shapes, but somehow still, I always get a few false fits in their puzzles. So kind of weird, but it's fine. Like there weren't too many, um, but yeah, it was just a really beautiful puzzle to put together and not too difficult, quite fun, a lot going on. So yeah, just really, really enjoyed that one. Um, yeah, it's just a really pretty image. And then I did a little 500 piece one here called breakfast, which is just kind of a weird, quirky, fun image. It's lovely gradient. And then it just, yeah, it's like, someone's breakfast that's been knocked into the air and looks like someone was rushing. It looks like me if I was rushing trying to have breakfast and then knocked everything everywhere. Um, but yeah, the 500 piece is actually the same piece quality and uh, size as their regular 1000 pieces. So they're not like large pieces or anything. They're just exactly the same. Um, yeah, just had fun doing this one. And I think, oh, that's right. Usually they're puzzles come with a poster. This one did, but for whatever reason, Botany didn't. I think maybe it's an older one. Like maybe their older ones didn't come with a poster. Um, no big deal. I could still, they have like the whole image on the front anyway. So, um, but yeah, this one did come with a poster. So I don't know. And then, oh, there's a lot to choose from still. Okay, let's do these two. So these two were really interesting. I was actually very fortunate. Um, these are by the company Pezzle. And the owner, Taylor, she sent me all six of the launch collection to try out. So that was super generous and kind. And I made a video on these again, that that's linked up the top. And yeah, really, I mean, I'm in love with the whole collection. Like the images are just so funky and fun and cool and quirky, like right up my alley, like love them. And I love the packaging. So yeah, I really enjoyed these. Um, the, all, the whole collection is just really fun and fantastic. I'm actually gonna do one a couple more soon on Instagram. So I guess keep an eye out for those if you're interested. Um, but yeah, I just really love a lot about these. Um, they also have this, that beautiful sort of soft touch silicon surface, like both on the box and the pieces and even the reference poster is printed with it. It's so bizarre. And they come in these beautiful um, fabric or like canvas bags with the logo on it. Um, yeah, so 
let's uh, I guess go through them so this one was the 1000 piece ball is in your court one and yeah basically it's just this fun sort of like image like aftermath of like a school dance or something like that and it has like the disco ball and balloons and the, the classic red cups and everything and tinsel um, yeah so just very fun Polaroids um, yeah neither of these were too difficult they were pretty easy the only issue I had was that, well, one, they have paper backing, which isn't my favorite, but that actually wasn't too problematic. But there were quite a few like bent tabs in both. So they somehow, I guess, during the cutting or manufacturing process or something like that, some of the uh, pieces got a bit bent. So I, I was actually able to communicate that with the owner who's sort of been passing on uh, feedback from us puzzlers who have been trying out this collection uh, back to her manufacturer to sort of improve her next collection which is that's exciting and good to know um, but apart from that yeah really really loved it um, definitely this brand I think is going to be some of my favorite puzzles for sure because they're just so fun and yeah just loved it and then yeah this one um, the pieces in this are actually a larger size than this so you know you know if you're looking for a puzzle that's um, yeah just has larger pieces like that are easier to pick up and see um, this could be a good option um, although this did have a few more issues with the quality like still the same good things about the quality but it had more bent tabs and also a little bit of issue with like some of the lamination or something coming off the pieces or not being sealed properly so if you watch the video you'll sort of see examples of it um, but apart from that yeah still loved it love this image oh this is 500 pieces and it's called cool as a cucumber i keep forgetting to mention that but yeah, it's just such a fun image of these cucumbers hanging out in their margarita swimming pool so yeah very fun so yeah definitely excited for this company it's quite new and you know very up and coming and really excited for like their current collection and also what else they're going to put out because the first collection is a real hit I think so I think it can only get even better from there so we've still got a few more here let's go through them so I did this little 500 piece Anatolian one called, let's see, Mariachi Miausik. So it's these, I guess a mariachi band, but they're all cats and they have all these cute mice dancing on the like bench in front of them. Um, yeah, I just did this one to practice for the competition. Um, and I don't know, it's been a while since I've done an Anatolian. So I couldn't quite, like I, I feel like I, have only done like 1000 piece ones and I feel like they might have been slightly different quality than, than this like I thought I liked them more than I liked this one so the box is fine lovely but the pieces um they didn't hold together that well like the piece fit was fine but it was loose so uh like when I'm trying to speed puzzle I couldn't pick up sections I had to like slide them on the table because they came apart really easily and also they were quite glossy because um, like I thought they would be like the box so the box sort of it's glossy but it has this kind of like linen like that crosshair kind of finish and I thought that's what some of my 1000 piece ones were like but actually the pieces in this it was very smooth and glossy so I was like hmm okay and there was puzzle dust so yeah I don't know I didn't love it that much um, but it's still a really cute puzzle and it's only 500 pieces um, oh, and the pieces are still really nice and thick and all that so it's still a nice brand, but it just wasn't quite as nice as I remembered some of my previ previous experience with the brand. So maybe it's just this puzzle or just their 500 pieces. I don't know. I um, guess I'll have to do some of the 1000 piece ones in my collection again to sort of remind myself and see what it's like. Um, yeah, anyway. And then we've got here a couple, well, quite a few other 500 piece ones. So I did a Springbok one, which is 500 piece and it's called Strolling Ephesus, which I think refers to um, these like mosaic ruins in Turkey, I think, because I was like looking up like what it was. Um, so I think it's sort of meant to be like, I guess these are, if you look closely, they're actually like colorful tile mosaics. Um, but yeah, this was um, only my second ever Springbok, but I had fun doing it. It's got the weird, wonderful, irregular piece shapes, but they fit very snugly together. The pieces are very cardboardy, like it's just a cardboard backing, but yeah, very, very cardboard and quite thick. Um, and sometimes you have to sort of jam the pieces together, but they hold together really well. 
and um, the top is just sort of like smooth and a bit glossy um, but you know like pretty pretty fun um, it was actually kind of a tricky image to do like even though it's bright and colorful and simple shapes it was still a bit like time consuming and tricky so but yeah very enjoyable um, glad I have it it's just a I don't know I kind of just like that it's sort of this simple pattern it's really nice um, and yeah I think there was a fair bit of puzzle dust too though which seemed to be the case when I did that cake springbok puzzle um, not my favorite brand but definitely still enjoyable I kind of feel like they're a bit similar to Cobble Hill um, like they're fine there's nothing wrong with them but they're not exceptional um, but I'm also very fussy so but that being said I would still if I saw a nice design by Springbok I would still grab it so yeah and then this was a new brand that I'd never done before I think it's called is it talking tables <laughs> yes talking tables and I sort of seen them around and I'd seen this one around it says it's called pick me up puzzle but the puzzle name itself is just cat puzzle which is what it is <laughs> it's just a cute 500 piece um, of all these cats chilling out in someone's stylish house um, but yeah so I just did this one to practice for the competition um, I quite enjoyed it um, it's just a really cute fun light-hearted image it has cats so that's great um, but what I thought was very interesting is when I pulled out the pieces I was like this is very familiar and my suspicion is so this is a UK brand I believe I think the pieces are the same pieces as Cloudberries or very similar so uh, they seem to fit the same way even including false fits um, they have the waxy top same size same thickness same like gray board backing like everything's the same the only difference I could tell was that the top of the Cloudberries has like a sort of almost linen like cross hatch finish but still waxy whereas this was waxy but smooth without that texture but everything else is like identical to cloudberry so I'm on to you guys I know uh, anyway yeah it's kind of, I guess that happens when you do so many puzzles you get to see some of the similarities between different brands and I guess there's only so many manufacturers in the world too so it would make sense that some companies are going to have the same manufacturer so yeah interesting I guess um, but yeah it was just a cute little puzzle um, I would definitely do the brand again even though there were like false fits and stuff because I sort of feel the same way about this as Cloudberries like everything else is still really nice about it it came with a little poster as well hang on did it come with a resealable bag no just a yeah pretty ordinary just a little reference poster I had to use my own Ziploc bag um, yeah pretty nice no, nothing like I don't know yeah, nothing super extraordinary about it, but just a very pleasant, nice puzzling experience and beautiful image. So yeah, if I see more images by that brand that I like, I'll definitely pick them up, I think. And then we just have a few more to go through here. So I did a couple of Buffalo Games ones. I did this 1000 piece Amy Stewart one called A Vintage Love Letter. Um, and I just, yeah, I've actually done this one a couple of times now and I just love her puzzles. They're always so, detailed and beautiful and intricate and they're just always so lovely and I kind of feel like you can't go wrong with it um, so I've got a lot of Buffalo games in my collection I've done a lot um, that I'm actually not the biggest Buffalo games fan but I am always a sucker and I end up buying their puzzles because they always have beautiful like puzzle designs and work with really awesome artists um, but their puzzles are fine like they're you know there's always puzzle dust they're like very cardboardy and kind of chunky pieces that fit very snugly together. Sometimes a little too snugly, like sometimes they're a little difficult to undo. Um, I also hate the boxes because they glue them. So you end up with like this very like rough glued ripped edge, which I'm not a fan of. Um, some of their puzzles come with like the little aren't glued and come with a little plastic uh, sticker seal. But yeah, these ones didn't, I think. Or did this one no I'm pretty sure I had to like like scissor them open so I'm not a fan of that and the pieces are always just loose in size so this is my own Ziploc bag um, but you know I've gotten used to it and it is what it is and also I find their pieces a bit glossy on top so yeah I'm not the hugest fan even though I have like a billion of them in my collection um, yeah I feel like I'm, I'm trapped into a, a 
bit of a love-hate relationship with <laughs> Buffalo games. But anyway, this was still a lovely puzzle and I really love doing Amy Stewart ones. And then another Buffalo Games one I did very recently is this cute little Cities in Colour Mademoiselle Cat 750 piece one. Just a beautiful, lovely cat that looks very spoilt and privileged in its lovely Parisian apartment with the view of the Eiffel Tower. Um, yeah, just beautiful colours and the quality is like the same as the 1000 piece, these sort of chunky cardboard pieces that fit pretty snugly together. This one as well had this sort of, you know, loose pieces inside. This is my bag and where you have to like kind of rip or sort of knife or scissor open the box because it's glued shut. Um, but you know, again, a beautiful image. So yeah. And then we've got here a few little 500 piece ones. So I tried this brand Crocodile Creek for the first time, 500 piece Birds of Paradise. And it's just this really fun, like beautiful color palette puzzle. And it's just, I guess, like essentially sort of all these tropical birds in like a jungle or rainforest and lovely flowers and insects and things. And yeah, really colorful. And obviously it's a very pinky purple color palette. Um, I guess the full image is on the back. Um, but yeah, these were like kind of, uh, this was an interesting brand. It was, uh, yeah, paper backing on the pieces, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it was fine. The pieces are quite large in this one. So I think this brand's actually aimed more at kids, but I don't care. I like the images anyway. <laughs> they have some really cute designs. Um, yeah, larger pieces that were kind of glossy and like quite hard. Um, but surprisingly, like the pieces actually fit reasonably well together, like sometimes they'd stay together pretty well to be able to like move the sections around. So yeah, not too bad and not much puzzle dust at all. Um, I don't think it came with a poster. I think I had to look at the back or the front, which was fine. It's like, I mean, maybe it would have been nice to have a poster because um, there is a fair bit of detail, but it was fine. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Um, again, like not my favorite brand, but it was still pretty good. Um, you know, I, I would definitely try more of their designs, I think. Um, yeah, so yeah, it was fine. Uh, it probably is like, I don't know, well, yeah, like I said, it's aimed more at kids. Like some of their designs are probably a bit more less mature, but I feel like this one's borderline. Like it's, I think a lot of adults could really easily love this one. And they definitely have other designs out there that are like probably more for a mature audience as well. And they even have like some 1,000 piece puzzles from memory as well. So there's definitely like a variety out there. But yeah, I was pretty impressed, I guess, for like my first time trying this brand. And then another new brand to me was this Lang puzzle brand. Um, this is like 500 piece and it says, featuring art from Susan Bordet's Cats in the Country. But this one was actually called Grandma's Quilt. And it's just this cute cat hiding, uh, uh, like trying to sleep or hide amongst grandma's lovely handmade quilt. Um, and yeah, I'd seen like this brand on Amazon a bit, but I'd never tried it, but I was actually very pleasantly surprised. So again, the pieces, I think they had a paper backing and were quite large, like similar to the Crocodile Creek, but the top was actually like a matte linen, is it matte? It was like a linen finish, like that crosshaired textured finish. So I was like quite surprised by that. Um, and they, the pieces held fairly well together and I don't think there was really much puzzle dust either. So that was good. But the other interesting thing was, uh, it came with a little mini reference poster, but it came in a non reusable, non recyclable, non resealable bag, but it also actually included a brand new like Ziploc bag. So I was like, oh, okay, it's kind of cool. Um, yeah, so kind of a lot included for like a, fairly inexpensive little 500 piece. And yeah, so I was pretty impressed actually. I think if I saw more designs of theirs that I liked, I would definitely try them out. Um, yeah, so yeah, surprised with this one. I wasn't expecting a lot cause it's pretty affordable and I don't know, I hadn't heard that much about it or anything, but I was yeah pleasantly surprised. So yeah, glad I got to try that out. I feel like I've tried out quite a few new brands this month. So. Yeah, very, very happy with that. And then these last two are both from Gallison. Um, so I did this beautiful, colorful one called At The Table. Again, I was just sort of testing my speed on it and did okay. 
but it was actually um, still kind of tricky. Like there's a lot going on. There's a lot of lemons and like blue and yeah, but it's a really beautiful image. Love the sort of vibrant colors and the sort of, yeah, it's just really bright and sort of happy and colorful and yeah. But um, if you've ever done Gallus and 500 piece puzzles, this is like all the others where the pieces that are that sort of like classic Gallison shape where they're kind of a bit elongated, but with the 500 piece ones, they tend to be like uh, bigger pieces, like kind of like these brands where they make the pieces bigger. Um, but I have a bit of a love hate relationship with Gallison as well, where I don't always like their piece quality. Sometimes they come a bit bent and they have paper backing and I'm not always a big fan of like the fit and stuff, but they always have the most beautiful images. So I'm like, Ugh, why? Um, so this was sort of like that case where, yeah, paper backing and sometimes the pieces held together and then sometimes they fell apart and whatever, but I love the image, so it's fine. I'll put up with that. And yeah, the last puzzle I did was yet another Gallison one called Afternoon Tea 500 Pieces. And it's just this really pretty cute little cafe with all these lovely flowers and some cats here and a cat up there and some birds all just sort of hanging out. Uh, looks like these cats might have ordered themselves a muffin, a cupcake and some coffee or tea and are just enjoying their afternoon at the cafe. So very cute and very pretty. I think there's a dog one out there that's very similar, like my, maybe the same artist and a very similar style. So that one looks really cute too. Um, but yeah, basically exactly the same quality as this one, the sort of larger pieces. Oh, that's the other thing I didn't mention about these two. They're square and I think that's sort of the same for all of Gallison's 500 pieces. They're always like a actual square puzzle. So yeah, but yeah, bigger pieces, um, same paper backing, kind of glossy top, not too much puzzle dust. Um, yeah, so again, not my favorite quality, quality wise, but I put up with them because they have very nice images. So that is everything for the month of April. Uh, so let's talk about what was my least favorite and my favorite. So this month it was kind of tricky trying to figure out both my least favorite and my favorite, uh, mainly because unlike last time where I had a really obvious choice for my least favorite this month, there wasn't such a stark, like standout difference. Like there wasn't anything that was like super terrible or, you know, and there were also a lot of awesome puzzles this month. So yeah, I definitely enjoyed all the puzzles I worked on this month and nothing was like, terrible quality or anything like that. So it was quite tricky coming to this decision, but I ended up deciding that my least favorite for this month is gonna to have to be the 2000 piece Ravensburger Cinderella puzzle, um, mainly for the reasons that I said that uh, the image quality was a bit blurry and fuzzy on the pieces. So that was a bit disappointing. And that I just got a bit bored and found a bit difficult, especially being this 2000 piece size. So I think that's more like a personal lesson learned that I either need to do less difficult 2000 pieces or, uh, you know, break them up with other puzzling in between. So yeah, but um, there wasn't really anything too bad about this puzzle. It just, I guess, wasn't quite as fun and good as the other puzzles this month. And then for my favorite puzzle, that was also tricky because there were quite a lot of puzzles this month that, you know, really had some awesome qualities and awesome images. Um, so I, I think my favorite this month is going to have to go to the Art and Fable Mantis Moody 1000 piece, which sadly is not here today to accept its award, but I will put a picture up the top of it. Um, yeah, just again, love the quality. The image is really beautiful. Um, and yeah, just an overall really awesome puzzling experience. And uh, would definitely do lots more of them. So yeah, that was my favorite and least favorite for the month. So let me know what you thought of my picks and also what did you think of all the puzzles I did this month? Have you done some of these? Um, are there some that are on your wish list? Yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you show that like button some love. And if you want to see more videos like this and for even more puzzle content, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. By subscribing, not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released, but you're also helping this channel grow. 
And you can also find me over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.